In this video, I'm going to take a look at technical breaches of the law, technical breaches of employment law, and what is the outcome. In other words, if there's no prejudice, no disadvantage of or to the employee, if there's a technical breach, are they entitled to compensation? I came across a decision there relatively recently in the Labour Court. It was a case involving um, Miss Burns, Miss Bridget Burns, against her employer. And what happened was she brought a claim against her employer to the Workplace Relations Commission. And the claim was for the failure of the employer to give her a written statement of employment in accordance with the terms of, inf terms of employment Information Act 1994. Now that particular act and a further statutory instrument set out about 20 things there or thereabouts that should be included in the statement. And in this particular instance, the employer did give us a contract, a written contract, a written statement, but included or excluded about three things. One of the things that it failed to do, for example, was to uh, stipulate or set out the correct name of the company. In other words, the letters CD and the word Ireland in brackets was excluded from the statement. So this was one of the basis of the claim that the company had failed in its duty to give a written statement. The other was that the annual leave year was not in accordance with the legislation which in the Organisation of Working Time Act 1997 it stated that the leave year runs from the 1st of April to the 31st of March and in this particular uh, workplace it ran from 1st of January to 31st of December which is a very very commonplace uh, incident or occurrence rather in the um, in the workplace. Now Miss Burns was successful in her claim if you could call it success at the WRC because the adjudicator found that yes indeed there was a technical breach of the law these three things were uh, not uh, dealt with in the statement from the employer and the employee's claim was well founded but the award for relatively trivial technical breaches which resulted in no loss or prejudice or detriment to the employee the award granted to her was 200 euros. So Miss Burns decided to appeal this decision to the Labour Court. And the Labour Court then relatively recently issued a decision in this. In the Labour Court ruling, they referred to a previous case involving a man called Patrick Wall versus Irish Water. And a similar situation had obtained in that situation in that Mr. Wall was indeed given a written statement of employment but it was imperfect in there was insofar as there was two or three elements of it that were missing. But there was no detriment or no loss or no prejudice for the employee. In that particular case, the Patrick Hall case, or Patrick Wall, it's the Irish Water case anyway, the uh, Labour Court took the view that the common law principle of um, de minimis non curat lex that means the law will not concern itself with trifles should apply so it basically held that in a situation where there is technical breaches of the law and where there's no loss to the employee then it may well be the case that no compensation is payable now in the bridget burns case this is precisely what the labor court held and they applied the same sort of thinking, the same sort of principle, the same sort of common law principle, and they referred to a, either a High Court or a Supreme Court case which set out the principle that the law does not concern itself with trifles. And the Labour Court in this particular decision actually reduced Miss Burns' award by the WRC adjudicator from €200 Euros down to nil. So she went away from the Labour Court empty-handed. So this is a situation where, as I say, it's a technical breach of the law. However, there was no loss or prejudice or detriment to the employee. 
and the Labour Court it takes this view that if there isn't, then compensation is not appropriate. And in this case, as I say, reduced the award from €200 Euros to nil. I hope you find this video useful. Um, if you do, give it a thumbs up down below. And you may be interested in subscribing to my YouTube channel or even leaving a comment down below. And just in relation to this case and the other case, the Patrick Hall or Patrick Wall case versus Irish Water, and this case involving Miss Burns, both of these cases are linked from a, a blog post that I've just written and published on employmentrightsireland.com. You can have a look at the blog post. You can read it in more detail than I'm explaining here. You'll see the principles set out by the Labour Court and you'll be able to read the actual decisions in both cases. They're very, very useful if you're an employer or if you're an employee. Clearly, if you're an employer, and you've given a contract of employment to an employee and it is somehow imperfect or leaves out one or two things, clearly it's open to you to make an argument that the breach of the act, breach of the law, is trivial and technical and should not require or result in compensation. If you're the employee, obviously you're going to have a different argument, but the bottom line is you'll have a difficulty if the WRC uh, follows the approach of the Labour Court and it's quite likely that they will. As I say, you can check out the blog post on my website employmentrightsireland.com. I'll leave um, a link down below and that blog post in turn then will link to the two cases. I hope you find this useful.